When we deploy an application to production, we probably want to use logs to have information about the things that happen in the application. Then the question arises, where are we going to store these logs? There are several options. One of them is that you create your own provider so that you can do with the log messages what you want. For example, save them in your database. Another option is to use Application Insights to save these logs. Application Insights is an Azure service with which we can monitor our applications. It is not limited to being a simple log repository, it also helps us to perform performance analysis of our applications and includes analytics to help us explore the status of our applications. In this video, we will focus on the backend of an ASP.NET Core application. However, we can use application insights in other places, such as an Angular, React, or Node.js application, among others. The application we will use is the default application that we obtain when creating an ASP.NET Core 3.1 project with a Web API template. So let's create that project. Let's click here, ASP.NET Core Web Application, we will call it Tutorial Application Insights, and we will press Create. We will choose Web API, and we will click on Create. If you use Visual Studio, it is really easy to configure Application Insights in your project. You just have to do the following. You have to go to the Solution Explorer, right-click on your project, Add, and choose Application Insights Telemetry and then click on get started and this will pop up a wizard through which you can create your application insights resource and that is also going to configure your application so that it is ready to go though if you are not using visual studio or if you want to do this manually you can so let's close this and let's do the process manually for those that are not using visual studio the first step is to install a Nugget package. So let's go here, manage Nugget packages, browse, and let's say Microsoft application insights.asp.net core. And let's install this. Accept. Now the second step is to go to the startup class and add the services of application insights. So let's say services, add application insights telemetry. And here you can choose how to pass what is called the instrumentation key which is an identifier for your application insights resource. You can, for example, use options to specify the configuration of your application insights service, or you can, for example, just simply pass the instrumentation key here, or you can leave this blank, and this will use a configuration provider to obtain the instrumentation key. That is exactly what we are going to do. So. Let's go to the app settings file and notice that I am using the app settings and not the app settings.development.json. We are going to use that one later and I am going to do the following. I am going to say application insights and I am going to create a section which is going to have this property instrumentation key and here I will put my key. Where does this key come from? It comes from an application insights resource. So let's go to portal.azure.com and here we can go to application insights, which we have it here, and we can create a new one by pressing add. You can choose a subscription, a resource group. I can create a new one. Let's call it tutorial application insights. Let's click on OK. Tutorial application insights, and you can choose whatever region is closer to you. I will choose East US and review plus create and create. And now that it has finished, let's go to the resource. And here to the right, we are going to find the instrumentation key. We can click on here to copy it. And now let's go back to Visual Studio and let's paste it here. And with this, we have configured application insights into our application. Now let's use it. In order to save logs in application insights, we just have to use the iLogger service that is configured by default in ASP.NET Core applications. This is achieved by injecting an iLogger service into whatever class we want to do the logging. So let's go here to the controllers, weather forecast controller, and we're going to see that we already have an example of how to inject an iLogger service. We have iLogger and the name of the class in which we're in. In this case, weather forecast controller, and then we are saving the instance into a field. And here we can put an example. Here we are saying logger debug 
information, warning, error, and critical. These are the different levels that the logger accepts, being debug the lowest level and critical the highest level. By default, Application Insights is configured to only receive the log levels warning, error, and critical. We will have to configure it so that it can log debug and information messages. And after that, we have an example of an exception. Here we are saying not implemented exception, and here we are saying log error, and we are passing the exception and its message. Now we can run our application so that these messages get saved into Application Insights. Here we can see that the application has run, so we can go here to the portal.azure.com, and let's go down here, and under monitoring, you are going to see logs, and here we can see our logs. Here you have a screen in which you can write queries. For example, I can write traces, which is the object in which the log messages are saved into. And if I press wrong, you are going to see that we have no data, but that is because sometimes it can take about five minutes for the messages to show up. So I will pause the video and we will be right back. A few minutes has passed by, so now if I click on run again, we're going to see some results. And as I told you, we're only getting warning, error, and critical messages. We're not getting information or debug. As I told you also, you can write queries here. For example, I can say pipe order by, let's say time stamped descending. And if I click on run, we're going to get our messages order by the timestamp field in descending order. We can also write where clauses where message is equal to critical one, for example, wrong. And as you can see, we only get this message. So this is a powerful tool to navigate through your logs. And of course you can expand here and you can see more information. One really useful field is the operation parent ID which allows you to have a correlation ID that identifies all the messages that came from the same HTTP request on your web API. For example, let me delete this and let's press run again. And you are going to see that they all got the same operation parent ID because they correspond to the same HTTP request. You are going to see in a minute that the next batch of messages are going to have the same ID between them, but it is going to be different to this ID that we have here. Now, something we're missing here is the exception. If you remember, here we have an exception, a non-implemented exception. What is it? It is not here because it is not a trace, but it is an exception. So we can double click here and we get exceptions here and we can click on run. And here we have the exception, the non-implemented exception. Here we have the time in which it occurred, the type of exception, the assembly, the method, and so on. We have another place in which we can visualize exceptions, which is in the failures section here. So let's click on it. And here, as you can see, we have a 404 get fav icon icon, which is this icon that we don't have in our project. And besides that, I have this exception here and I can click on this number and I can click on here. And as you can see, we get some details of the exception. We even have the call stack down here. We can click on here, just my code, and we can even see the line of code in which the error was thrown. If we go back, we can see that it is indeed on line 40, just like it says here. Now let's go back here and let's fix our issue with the debug and information messages. As I told you, the problem is that by default, only warning, error, and critical messages are shown. To change this, we can go to App Settings, and we can paste the following code here in the Login section. As you can see, what we're saying is the following. Instead of Login, Application Insights, Log Level, Default, Debug. And with this, we're saying that we want to show log messages of the level Debug and Up, which are then Debug information, warning, error, and critical. So let's change this to two, and let's change this to iteration. And now let's press Control F5 to run our application. And as you can see, our application has run. And now we can go back here. We can go to 
here. Let's go to logs and again, let's click on traces and let's use our order by time stamp in decent order. And we have to wait a few minutes before the new batch of messages appear on application insights. And now let's click on run. And as you can see, we are getting critical error warning information and debug, which means that our fix actually did the trick. And now we are seeing debug and information messages here in the traces object. And of course, as we said before, if we go down here, we can see the messages from before. And if we go to the column operation power 90, you are going to see that they have different values because they came from different HTTP requests. Although you can also use the operation ID field for this, the operation parent ID is a shorter one. Now, you probably do not want the logs generated at development time to be displayed on your Azure portal. You want only those from your production server to be displayed. One way to do this is to use different instrumentation keys for development and production. For example, using app settings. Let's go to Visual Studio to see this. Let's go to the Solution Explorer and remember that in the app settings.json we have the real instrumentation key. So what we want is to copy this and go to the app settings development JSON and here we are going to paste this JSON code but we are going to replace this real instrumentation key by this false instrumentation key. It doesn't matter how many zeros you put here, just that whatever value you have here cannot be the real instrumentation key. Because of the way the app settings files are configured, this one is going to substitute the real instrumentation key when you are in development mode. And with this, you are making sure that when you are in development, you are not going to be using your instrumentation key. So the log messages are not going to appear on the Azure portal. Finally, you may not want to have your key here in your code for security reasons. Something you can do about it is to put this key in an environment variable in production. For example, if you have an Azure app service, you can go to the configuration section and configure this as the following. You can say, you can take this and go to Azure and I will go to an Azure app service from my Blazor course and I will go to configuration and here we can configure application settings. We can say new application setting, application insights, colon, instrumentation key, instrumentation key and the value is going to be our value that we have here and I can press OK and we can click on save and now we're going to have the instrumentation key available in production and we can delete it from here. And what this does is to avoid to have the key in your source code and now you can be sure that unauthorized people are not going to see your key. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.